So uh, I'm going to talk about uh, sort of portable photoacoustic imaging system that we developed over the past few, uh, six or seven months of work. Uh, in our lab, uh, we work with different kinds of ultrasound transducers, right from uh, commercial ones to flexible and MEMS ultrasound, uh, as well as uh, uh, we have recently started making our own bulk ultrasound transducers as well. <clears throat> so the uh, the key uh, thing involved here is photoacoustic imaging. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, what it exactly is, and I'm going to talk about the architecture of my transistor and the system, and uh, just show the initial imaging results that we have so far. So, uh, yeah, uh, so uh, optical imaging by itself uh, is uh, very useful because it can give uh, a lot of information uh, which is biochemically relevant, uh, but uh, it can work only up to a millimeter of depth uh, when we use scattering in OCT. Uh, otherwise, uh, we are uh, we use it uh, in all the optical microscopes. Uh, if we go for optical uh, tomography, then the resolution um, becomes really bad, and uh, you can't uh, get really good images uh, for uh, which, which will be clinically uh, useful. Um, ultrasound, on the other hand. Uh, doesn't scatter as it goes inside the tissue, and hence the resolution uh, is not as bad as uh, any optical uh, system uh, as you go deep inside the tissue. At the same time, ultrasound recently has been going through uh, lots of uh, improvements. Uh, the uh, systems are now uh, handheld systems are available that can integrate directly with the mobile phone. Uh, you have uh, the uh, uh, we are we're reaching higher and higher frequencies, so you can improve resolutions and go down to even tens of microns uh, when you are limited in depth. And uh, if you want to go for the whole of the body, uh, you can do tomography, and uh, with slightly lower frequency, you can uh, pretty much uh, go up to six to seven centimeters deep. So it's, it's pretty uh, useful uh, as an imaging uh, modality. But the information that's there in all the ultrasound images is essentially the anatomical information. It's just the physical properties of the tissue, uh, the changes in acoustic impedance as you go down uh, in the tissue. Uh, so photoacoustic imaging, on the other hand, uh, the basic idea is that um, we shine a sharp pulse, uh, less than 100 nanosecond wide pulse of light on tissue. Wherever this light is absorbed, uh, because the pulse is very small, uh, there is a very transient and tiny change in temperature. Uh, and that change in temperature, uh, which happens wherever light is absorbed, leads to a pressure generation. This pressure propagates outward and you can pick it uh, using a bunch of ultrasound transducers. Uh, and from this information, you can now recreate uh, the locations, uh, kind of where, uh, how much pressure came from what location which is then proportional to how much light was absorbed in the first place. So you end up getting a map of absorption of light in different parts inside the tissue. Uh, so it's, it's a very good uh, complement to ultrasound, where in ultrasound you throw sound and wherever reflections come back from, you pick those reflections and create an image. In this case, you throw light and wherever light gets absorbed, uh, you, that it generates sound and you pick that sound and create an image. Uh, at the same time, because now you're using light, uh, you can shine different colors of light. Uh, hence, uh, and, and the image is generated, uh, ultrasound image is generated uh, from those different colors of light, uh, can then be correlated with the absorption spectrums of different molecules. Uh, and hence, you can uh, separate out uh, images which are corresponding to uh, different parts. Uh, mainly, you can clearly distinguish uh, oxygenated and deoxygenated blood, and you can even capture uh, lipids and, and other things. Uh, most of the uh, ultrasound uh, photoacoustic imaging systems essentially hence involve uh, just a combination of light and sound, uh, but the instrumentation is uh, like still uh, complicated and it depends on uh, what resolution you want. Uh, if you are looking for optical resolution, uh, you need a confocal ultrasound and uh, optical beam. 
and the optical beam itself uh, if it is focused to the deflection uh, optical deflection limit then you can get a uh, sub micron or uh, at least a few micron resolution images uh, this will be still limited to a millimeter or so uh, now uh, if you uh, take advantage of acoustic focusing uh, you can go further deep in the tissue and uh, get images where the lateral resolution is now dependent on the focal uh, acoustic focal spot. So you can use focus ultrasound transistors and uh, as you go higher in the frequency you will uh, you will be uh, dealing with less depth uh, but the resolution will be improving uh, as good as 50 micron uh, or so. Uh, we targeted in this work to develop a portable photoacoustic imaging system uh, where the front end of it, the probe, uh, should be limited to uh, two to three millimeters so, so that eventually it can be integrated as a part of a biopsy needle. For this, uh, the way we envision the system is like this. We designed everything around the optical fiber. So uh, we take optical fiber, uh, we put a ferrule as a base and we built a ring ultrasound transducer on top of it uh, and did the assembly in such a way that any particular fiber can be just you can just slide a fiber through and that is the source of light and the ring transducer can just keep the sound uh, but but making the probe head small by itself is not sufficient so we looked at all the different parts involved and made them as well small so that we can ultimately make a portable system so for the light we used a tiny diode uh, thanks to uh, recent advances advances in lidar uh, we have now uh, very small pulse laser diodes available that can give a uh, few watts of peak optical power uh, during those tiny pulses. Uh, because uh, instead of a big laser, now it's a small diode, uh, the corresponding circuit is also small. So we have a driver which is the uh, size of a matchbox. Uh, we made our own ring ultrasound transducer. We even made a circuit for rest of the ultrasound acquisition. So the gain uh, required and the acquisition and, and so on. Uh, which is kind of uh, almost done, and uh, it's, it's going to be uh, it's going to become a tiny box uh, in future. Uh, in this work, uh, making the ultrasound transducer by itself, uh, by, by ourselves, was a big call, and that required us to learn the fine art of making ultrasound transducers. As such a tiny piece of piezoelectric material can function as ultrasound transducer, but it won't quite work very well because you will have a lot of ringing, and you need to put it together in certain way. Um, so, uh, we went ahead with uh, this in a little bit uh, nice way. We uh, start with a piece of uh, piece of ceramic, dice it into tiny uh, pieces. We want to achieve a tiny, small diameter as well in working with. So, in this process, it's mainly uh, doing, uh, doing the tooling very well, playing around with different epoxies, and uh, coming up with ways to uh, work with the piece of ceramic. Um, so we, we take the tiny diced piece of piece of ceramic, drill a hole using a diamond drill and put a machinable ceramic around it as a, as a cylindrical mold. Uh, this uh, thing we then fill with uh, E folder uh, uh, E3022. Uh, that's essentially a silver epoxy uh, which has a lot of uh, silver particles in it. Uh, and then we centrifuge this thing at 10,000 RPM. So all the silver particles end up going close to and, and adhere very well with the piece of ceramic so that it can work as a very good backing layer so, uh, so that it can uh, uh, pick all the reflections from the piece of piece and uh, dampen them out as quickly as possible. This becomes a single piece in itself so that we can now work on it further. The next step is, uh, which is pretty critical, is to turn it down uh, to the required diameter. So. Uh, when we turn it down using uh, diamond, uh, uh, like uh, uh, using diamond chips, then uh, it kind of flakes out sometimes. Uh, let, uh, recently, we uh, started with the grinding process where uh, the uh, the this assembly itself is rotating, and we have a, a tiny uh, grinder which is rotating very fast. So we go for very high speed, and we end up getting uh, much better results. So we can uh, much achieve. Uh, one millimeter diameter in future. Right now, we're at two millimeter in this case. Uh, after that, we uh, drill a hole uh, through again. The piece of ceramic was already drilled, but E solder later filled it up, and uh, then using any normal drill, we can basically make a hole through that. Then we assemble it with a, a polyimide tube, 
uh, use uh, Apotech Fio One to uh, fill uh, all of this thing up uh, and uh, put optical fiber in the center. Uh, few generations of devices are now done and uh, earlier I was working with a 150 micron thick PZT which was giving me around 13.5 megahertz center frequency. Recently we, we could make this with uh, PMNPT and achieve higher frequency uh, and much better results. Also the aperture, earlier we were losing the aperture quite a bit so now we are just using a polymide tube around it so we are not losing too much uh, material on the outer side. Uh, we, I'm just using a, a, another piece of polymide tube as an aligning sleeve for the whole thing. So this becomes just a single piece in which I can push in any fiber and take it out uh, as and when my experiment demands. Uh, once the ultrasound transistor is uh, made, we just do carry out the basic calculation. So uh, we look at the pulse echo. Uh, that, that seems pretty nice. Uh, when we see the bandwidth, it, it shows around 25%. So there is a room for improvement. We, we can achieve as much as 60 to 70% with bulk ultrasound transistors. So in this case, we haven't put matching layer yet uh, because we want to put a lens there uh, in future and then uh, hopefully this will improve in further. We look at the impedance measurements. Uh, we are in 100 to 150 ohm impedance uh, in the uh, area where we're going to work. And then we take this, this assembly and uh, throw light on a pencil lead. It absorbs the light and it's some sound and we can pick the pulse that comes back. Uh, then we just make, SM, uh, make make the whole system around it, uh, put put our transistor uh, on a stage which scans around uh, anywhere we want and we can just pick images of the back. So there are different parameters that we used and uh, when we scan it around on a uh, phantom where we are just embedding PSU written, we can pick uh, all the signals wherever the transistor is right on top of PSU and we can create an image of it. Uh, to check the resolution, we take we, we do a linear scan uh, across a very sharp edge, and based on how fast the signal drops, we estimate the resolution to be around 300 micron, which is not very good. But we have scope of improvement by, in, uh, by uh, doing focusing. So for optical focusing, we'll be using green lens. Uh, this will have a small working distance, but hopefully good resolution. Uh, a more promising thing will be to try and go for acoustic resolution microscopy where we will uh, put acoustic lens on top and try to achieve 700 uh, micron. Uh, and even more interesting thing is to now go from a single element system to a multi element system. It's only possible with uh, bulk ultrasound transistors, but the main ultrasound system will allow it. So we have already fabricated uh, ring payment arrays uh, and uh, we are now uh, working on assembling the ring payment arrays on the sensor head instead of bulk ultrasound transistor uh, to see uh, how far we can go with this. So uh, that's that's all I have. Uh, we could make a portable photoacoustic system within 2.5 mm diameter. Uh, the two uh, devices that I showed are centered at 13.5 and 13.5 megahertz. Uh, we could get the signals from a simple pencil that as far as two centimeters away uh, with this thing. Uh, so that, that's quite uh, nice, uh, even though the light is right now focused. So uh, it seems that even low intensity of light uh, is pretty uh, useful in this case. Uh, we are right now at my resolution and we have a way forward to improve it further. So thank you and I would like to thank all my collaborators uh, and funding agencies.